In Brazil, it, it's it's pretty much like this. When you when you're growing up, either you you train some kind of martial arts. Back in the day, I used to train capoeira, which I started when I was 12 years old, and I trained until I was uh, 22. Um, or jiu-jitsu, judo, or you play soccer. I was never a, a good soccer player, so uh, my choice was pretty much going to the martial arts. When I moved to Bahia, that was my first contact with jiu-jitsu, with Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I trained under uh, Minotauro. Um, there was a school that he had over there. I was in his, uh, his uh, hometown, Vitória da Conquista, in Bahia. I started training in Boston with uh, Boston Brazilian jiu-jitsu, and I was uh, training with Kenny Florian. And uh, when I was about to move here, I asked him uh, a good school to train in, in, in DC and uh, he sent me over to Yamazaki Academy and that was in 2000. It's pretty much like this, when you first started you think you're the man, right? So anybody mess with you on the street and you want to fight, blah blah but after a while you start getting you know the, the real meaning of the, the martial arts and, and that makes you calm down so then you really don't get into many fights and because you know pretty much what you're able to do and so you, you know, chill out more. Jiu-Jitsu, uh, it became a lifestyle for me. So, uh, and, and it's pretty much, uh, it makes me, it made me challenge myself every day. So uh, it, it made me feel like uh, if I am inside of my comfort zone, that is, that's not my comfort zone. My comfort zone, it's outside of my comfort zone. So that's pretty much what, what it did. And, and then when you train jiu-jitsu, you keep, like, people talk about, oh, how tough you are. And, but the reality is, it's not, it doesn't really matter what the other people say about you, but it, you need, I actually, I need to prove myself. So uh, that's why I decided to, to do the, the MMA fight. So when I had the opportunity, uh, I asked Fernando if I could do it, uh, and Mario Neto, and they said, you know, yes, and they trained me for, um, and that's when I did my first fight. When you go to a, a jiu-jitsu match, you know that you're not gonna get, in, you're not gonna get punched in the face. Uh, and you go, when you put yourself in a MMA situation, once they lock the cage, it's you and the guy, you know, if uh, he, he, he can kick you, he can punch you. So if you don't really trust what you do, um, it's, it's a lot of more about confidence. Uh, as long as you train for that fight and you have the confidence that you train and you can just go and do your 100%, um, that's, that's it, you know, you just go in you may be punched, but you'll be able to defend, and if you make a mistake, you know you made a mistake. You know, so I train really hard, like they, Fernando, Neto, they prepare me like really hard for my first fight, uh, and it was one of the best feeling I ever had. Um, I love it, you know, that's why I decided to do it again. And when you, we, you do something uh, such as jiu-jitsu, you, you practice a martial art like jiu-jitsu, you are um, you become like a very goal oriented so you set a goal in your life and once you accomplish okay you're done and then you need to you go for a higher goal so so when i when i was training for that fight uh my goal was to win the fight so the adrenaline is crazy you 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 really you pretty much like you get uh like you're on a roller coaster you, you remember very little. It's, it's more about uh, muscle memory or what you train for. Things become like natural for you. Uh, and, and then you, you, once you see it, you tap the guy out or you knock him out and, or you get knocked out and then uh, and you win or you lose. And then afterwards, you're kind of going to see, okay, this is what I did. This is, I mean, that, that was my experience as an amateur fight fighter so um, the second fight is different you know you have more control what you're doing you control your adrenaline more uh, so it, it, it's easier I would say and I don't know how it would be the third one you know because I never got to do it beginning of 2010 I was training uh, to you know to do my third MMA fight 
and I start feeling uh, some pain on my sciatic nerve. So I went to the doctor and uh, in the beginning they, they, they said, uh, oh, all you have is like a little inflammation in your sciatic nerve. And they gave me a bunch of painkillers and um, uh, like anti-inflammatory. And then I was like probably like a month and a half uh, just taking those pills. And then once the, I ran out of the pills, the pain came back like really strong, right? And because what we do here, we condition ourselves in, in like feel, we feel pain. And for us, it's just, oh, maybe I'm overtraining or maybe, so you don't really worry about it. Uh, so I never really went to a doctor. And, uh, I, you know, to add on that, I was starting a company, I was starting my business, and I didn't have uh, health insurance on the beginning because I didn't want to spend the money. Um, so I was like, yeah, I'm not going to a doctor and um, until my roommate had to call 911 and I was forced to go. And that, that's when they, um, they did a PET scan um, and I was diagnosed with uh, stage four non-Hodgkin's lymphoma on my liver, on my spleen, and I had a huge mass on my back that was pushing the sciatic nerve and that's why I was feeling the pain. Uh, based in what I saw, the other statistics, uh, you are 70-30, like a 70% chance of not making it. And then I, I was, I was in the beginning, I was in shock, you know. So your, it's pretty much your whole life goes through your mind, and you really don't know like what to expect. So. Um, I, I, you know, I just, I stopped for a moment, I cried, you know, and, uh, and I, I knew I had two options, either fight or give up. Uh, what I learned uh, my entire life and in my entire, all those years uh, with Fernando, with Mario, with Neto, that give, giving up is not an option. So, um, I think my jujitsu heart, um, everything that they, they, you know, they taught me like this in, all this time, it really came out and, and says, look, you're not giving up. Uh, and I literally, I, you know, I talked to God and I said, you know, you give me another chance and I'll, I'll be much, a, a much better person. And I thought true. I was like, maybe you, you will take me. I don't know if it's exactly what it is you know if, if you know if I have it it's for me to have it. it's not for my neighbor it's not for my friend so um, there's a reason for it and I'm gonna find out what is the reason and I just fought through it and thank God man I I, I was uh, I was scheduled to do uh, 12 rounds of chemo and um, and some radiation so I I did 11 uh, sections of radiation and uh, when I was on my fourth chemo, uh, I had a, another scan done and my liver was clean. Uh, my spleen was clean, the liver was almost clean and I had just very little uh, of the mess on my, uh, so uh, the doctor was, oh my God, like he, this is a miracle. Uh, and then I had uh, six rounds of chemo. Once I finished the sixth one, I was completely clean. And then they gave me uh, four uh, lumbar puncture chemotherapy, which is on a, on a spinal cord, uh, just to make sure that it will kill everything. And I've been, uh, right now, it's, this is my third year on remission. And this year is really special for me because uh, they also told me that I will never be able to have, um, to have a kid. And, um, you know, my, my daughter was born November 5th. After the cancer, my life turned around into a, such a positive life. Um, I did uh, two triathlons. Um, a, a friend of mine, it, it was amazing. Like when I first got diagnosed, because I didn't have insurance, um, the entire Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu community, they literally, they bent over and they helped me uh, they raised me about $40,000 on the first month. Uh, Fernando, Neto, uh, Mario, um, I, I, David Jacobs, uh, Rock, um, he, 
he organized uh, seminars, uh, and they did seminars throughout the East Coast. And so all the black belts on the East Coast, a lot of black belts, they, they opened their school and they gave seminars. And every time I come to, you know, every week, I, w I was coming here just to clean up my mind. So even though I wasn't training, I'll come here, I put my gi on, I walk on the mat just to, you know, just change my energy. And uh, every time I'll come here, Fernando will hand me an envelope and full of money. With all the help, it, it, I felt ashamed if I to give up. So I was like, I'm not, I'm not doing this. You know, um, I'm not giving up. Um, if anything bad happens, will ha will happen, but I'll be fighting all, all the way to the end. And fortunately, like I, you know, I, I, I did it, and it's, it's amazing. When there was one one friend of mine, uh, he actually a, a, a train partner here, uh, Santiago. He was part of the, the Lymphoma Leukemia Society, and he, did, uh, tri he ran a triathlon uh, on my honor when I was sick in 2010. And he asked me if, uh, if, I was, if I would get better, if I would run the triathlon with him the following year. And, and I was, uh, as soon as the doctor told me that, uh, that I could start exercising, I started training for the triathlon. And I was, uh, on top of that, I had uh, hepatitis. Because of the cancer treatment, I developed some type of hepatitis, so I was under a treatment. And I was training for the triathlon. And I did that, uh, so 2000, 2013, 2012, I ran my first triathlon. And this year, I did my second triathlon, and I'm planning to do like for the rest of my life. You know, so it, it's amazing. This is what jiu-jitsu brought to my life. You know, and it, it, cancer was, um, I think, an uh, obstacle that once I passed that, everything like clear up and uh, the sun, the paradise was right there in front of me. You know, so I'm, I'm very thankful for jujitsu, for everything, you know. As an example, we were training uh, escape from the side control, right? So we had this guy that was uh, two times your size, and he was controlling you on the side control. And Fernando was, um, you know, with the Shania on his hand, and he was hitting the mat and yelling at you, like, you need to escape, you need to escape, you need to escape, let's go, let's go, let's go. And with putting all the pressure that if you didn't escape, you would stay there for an hour. You know, in, in, so you had to escape. When we were training MMA, uh, we do um, like uh, some type of training that you in the bottle, the guy, th it, he has the knee on your stomach and he's pounding you, he's grounding and pounding you, he's punching you and you have to escape and you have no other option. So when I was under a treatment, I felt that I had somebody on my, you know, I was trying to escape from a side control position for a mount or somebody was, had the knee on the stomach and punching me, and my only option was escape. So I had to do somehow. So you, you, you forget about side effects of the treatment, you forget about uh, the bad stuff, and, and you, if you put in your mind, oh, you, you, tr you have noxious, you're throwing up because uh, because you have cancer. No, it's not because you have cancer, because the medicine is working in your favor. So you throw up and you go and you eat again. That's what, that's what I always did. I, I was a uh, hundred and uh, I usually weight 165, 170 when I'm really out of shape. I was 189 because I ate like so much oatmeal like every morning, two, three times a day. If I you know, have noxious, I'll throw up, I'll go eat again. Oh, you're not going to work. No, I'm going to work. You know, until I really couldn't, until my doctor tell me like, don't do it because, you know, this is going to make it worse. So then I had to come down. Uh -huh. well, what does it mean to be a good father? Well, um, first, you know, uh, I, I, I think my daughter is a miracle because I was, um, sorry. I was, um, you know, they told me that I would never be able to have uh, a child, and uh, so, uh, 
it's really hard to explain once I think for somebody that can have a child and then it's already a, a miracle you know you're already like that's uh, unconditional love somebody that was that like me that they said you may not be able to have a child and then out of nothing like yo you know I'm pregnant I was like oh my god and you see the little person that looks just like you and and you it, it's I never felt such a love and I would be the type of father that I would teach her um, that what is right what is wrong and uh, I would give the I'll try to give the best example as a man, as a, you know, as a husband, as a son, and as a father, you know, I would because I I want her to see this is how a man is supposed to be, and so she'll be able to judge for herself, um, and I will be like her best friend. That's the type of father that I'm that I'll try to be, you know, and uh, I will do my best. People say the you give more value once you lose or once you think that you may lose something and when I when I felt that I could lose my business and my life and my you know, everything that's when I start giving like oh my god this I, I I'm so fortunate I have all this and you know what I'm doing I'm not doing much and once I got better, I started working more, 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 more. Uh, and my state of mind, my employees, like people that work with me, I make sure that they are, they, they know that we, we are doing what we're doing because we have a purpose. And if you start doing something that there's no uh, good purpose for it, just don't do it. You know, and that's how I start running my business. And now uh, we're we're being business for like five years. Uh, I'm also doing real estate and construction and all kind of stuff. And I love it. I wake up every day thinking, you know, I'm so fortunate, and I'm gonna live this day if it was my last. Yeah, um, like right now, I I have a lot like going on like my life. You know, I just I just became a father. You know, and uh, but I'm, but, you know, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, like I said, is a lifestyle for me. So um, I'm planning to train for until I'm able to walk. And it was so funny because we have a, a very good example here. Uh, uh, Master uh, Mastery Mario uh, Yamazaki, uh, Fernando's father. Um, he, the other day I asked him like how, how, how long he's been training. And he said oh, over 70 years. I was like, oh my God. And he comes here, he teaches us seminars. He's, uh, and, 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 and I look at him and I say, I want to be like him. You know, so um, it's not something that you wanted, but you never saw before. We have the example right here with us. You know, so uh, that's, that's my planning. And MMA, as um, soon as I, I have like some, uh, some time that I can train and I can prepare myself you know, really well because I am not stepping on the, on the cage if I don't feel 100% confident. So if I have the time to train again, um, I'll definitely I'll do it. Yeah, I do have the desire. Yeah. You know, fear is it's, it's the, the biggest enemy of the success. So if you have, uh, if you're afraid, it's okay to be afraid, but you need to be able to control that fear and, and know that you need to break that to succeed. You know, and that's pretty much the lesson that we have here every day. It's really like since I, you know, I got better, um, I promised myself that, um, that I would do whatever I can to, to help other people that are going through the same situation that I am going through. Um, one thing that I that I that I do that I, I did you know since uh, I did 2012 and 2013 the, the triathlon, I got involved with the team in training, the Lymphoma Leukemia Society, uh, and and I started doing triathlon, raising money for 
you know, for the, the um, studies and so they can pay for uh, researching and for cancer, for blood cancer. And, um, but this, I don't think this is enough. Almost every day or sometimes when I'm driving um, and some like phrase or something that I remember that I went through and I, I remember something that I thought at the moment that helped me, I write it down. So I have a bunch of notes, um, like uh, motivation notes. Um, and I think if whenever I have enough and I can make that, uh, can be a little pocketbook or something that I would uh, the people there first get diagnosed and they can read and they can say well this guy you know he went through this so so I can go through this and I'll, I'll win because um, it I think the your mind it's so powerful that can either help you to get cured or can take you to the grave. So if you, if a lot of people, if you, they don't have a, a strong mind, I'm so fortunate because of this. I'm so fortunate that I have uh, Fernando, Mario, Neto, Rock, all these people here around me that, that I learned all this from Brazilian Jiu Jitsu that, I, that I, my mind was prepared. Like we are prepared to fight. So there was another fight, you know, so, uh, but most of people, they don't have that. And if I'm able to bring that to, to those people, that will, will make my, my life much, much better. I'm so thankful that I have this family here. Um, Fernando, Mario, Neto, the Yamazaki, like family, they be my family for, um, since I started here, since 2000, and they, what they taught me uh, was um, there's, there's nothing like that, that, there's no way that I can pay for, you know, the, it's much more than the monthly, you know, payment that you give to go come here and train Jiu Jitsu. It's way more than an arm lock, that a mount position, that any Jiu Jitsu movement. So uh, I just want to say that I'm so thankful and I'm so lucky to have all these people around. And, and I, you know, and more than I'm, thank, I'm thankful for everything I have, better things happen, you know, and you, you focus on the good things that happen in your life, more good things will come. You focus on the bad things, you complain about whatever. You, those things will grow and they will, you know, they'll take you, they'll get you. Um, so that's pretty much how I, I run my life. And, and, and I don't wish that anybody have cancer, but I wish that everybody could live like a cancer survivor.